All right, we got Dan Soder. How much time you have, by the way? Whatever you guys want to do, I don't give a Okay, you're not doing like a whole press tour thing? Uh, like this whatever. is the last thing for my, the afternoon, and then tonight I have Unmasked okay. with Ron Bennington. Cool, cool, cool. All right, Dan Soder's in the building. New special is out on HBO. Dan Soder, son of a Gary. I just watched it this morning. Woke up early, had the screener. You can see real professional. Yeah, but I also, I mean, I don't think I... I don't think I've ever laughed that much at like 7 a.m. Hey! It's a weird thing to watch like a very funny comedy You heard it here first. Special. I do morning comedy. <laughs> Just, it's like a cup of coffee. Um, shit was awesome, man. It's really, really good. Thanks, man. I'm happy with the way it came out. Are you I, like, do you feel like you did like, you, you knew you nailed it? I don't know if I nailed it. You I did. just know I wanted to put out like a old school stripped down stand up special, mm -hmm. which is like. I feel like this is the special for people that, uh, you know, I'm lucky enough to have Bonfire fans, but they know me. And I feel like when with Billions fans, they're like, oh, you do comedy? Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is the thing where it's like, just watch this. Right. And this this will catch you up to where I'm Everything. At. You right? know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. And then if you like this, you can go watch my Comedy Central Hour. You can go watch my This Is Not Happening and listen mm -hmm. to Bonfire. So mm -hmm. it's like, I feel like it's like not an introduction, but it's a good get to know me piece. How long uh, were you doing that material to, to that special? We filmed the stand-ups in March for Netflix, March of 2017. So about like two and a half years. So like, and it was like a lot of work like, coming on together. But it was a lot of like a lot of those bits in the special started off as longer bits, like real long and like different setups and shit. And finally I was like, this is fucking cut it down and do it. Mm -hmm. So it's tight. Because I want once once HBO signed on. I was like, man, I want to do. It. I gotta fucking work on this because we signed we signed the deal uh, December of 2018, and they were like, we want you to be one of the 2019 specials. And I was like, can I be one of the last ones? Because I want to go do Edinburgh Fringe and I want to run the fuck out of it. And they were mm -hmm. like, absolutely. And no. Nina and Aaron who work at HBO are the shit. Mm -hmm. Like, easy, they're the fucking best, best people I've ever worked with on stand up. Yeah, I mean, HBO is no no joke. That's the Yo, they deal. come in and the they're like, holy field. It's really weird. It's almost like getting a blowjob from a porn star. They just come in and they're just like, don't touch my hair. And then you're like, ah, fuck. Oh, yeah. They start thrusting in the air. Like, what are you guys doing? Because they just came in and they're like, don't, here's what we're, we're doing at all. Like, yeah. whatever you want to do. And the old school intro. Yeah, I was going to ask yeah. you, like, you picked that? Because I was like, yeah, what yeah. the fuck is this? this yeah, is awesome. Drew, if you watch Drew Michael's special, he's got the back half on it. And then I was like, give me the full shot. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a the, 30 second thing. Yeah, right? dude, from, from, the from, from 83, from yeah. when I was born. So right, I was like, this right. is fucking perfect. You can still hear the da na 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 But it's like the old school version. Yeah, it's Very cool. I was rolling joints doing that after we put the edit. I was like, and look at the joint. Do you, uh, do you, like, with this, do you obviously like not be content like that, but like, do you think you're like, you're good? You made it. You're a fuck no. Dude, that's I immediately bullshit. I immediately See, watched this and I was like, you got you got we got let's go back to work. <laughs> we got to fucking not, do it. No, I don't but I don't mean like being like dumb, but being like <laughs> I have achieved like I mean you essentially you achieved your dream. Like yeah. you, I, it's insane. I asked, it's like um I was talking about it uh, uh, on Busted Open the Wrestling Show today, but it really feels like you're winning a championship belt. It feels yeah, like you yeah, won like right. the, so, like I, I didn't win the heavyweight those. championship belt because I look like Chappelle's special and I look at Burr's special and I look like Nate Bargetti special. Mm. And I'm like, man, that's the heavyweight champs. Those are the heavyweights. But I feel like I won the Intercontinental Heavyweight yeah. Champion. You know what I mean? Like, I'm right below. Like, I got a, I got one of the top belts. But I, I definitely think it's like, when you look at a guy like Gaffigan or like uh, Louie and all these people that just put out, like, amazing special out here. I made, like, Chris Rock did Bigger and Blacker. I mean, he did uh, Bring the Pain, but then he came right back with Bigger and Blacker. So it's like one of those things where it's like, all right, now I did this special. Now let's hope in two years I got a fucking -up. better one. Yeah, like I want to be better. I want to be but, funnier. But you gotta wanna... feel like the blueprint. Like you're you're on the right track. You know Man, that, it, right? I like... Yeah, I got to pay off my college loans with this special, oh. which was like okay. <laughs> Now I did it. That, that was my that was my making. Isn't that fucking sick to think of that though? It's like you you, you just broke even. Really? Yeah. Like <laughs> for a, a journalism degree. Yeah. Like get the for fuck a fucking out of here. journalism <laughs> from Arizona. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude. I should have just gotten a communications degree from ASU <laughs> and fucking picked up crabs <laughs> and fucking have a 
you know, some kid that lives in Phoenix right now that I don't talk to, <laughs> and I'd be paying less money than getting a stupid journalism poli sci degree from fucking Arizona. When I went to FSU and I like uh, applied, I guess they liked my essay, and yeah. they said like. You can you can come because all my grades were shit and, and my SATs and stuff like that were shit. And they're like, you can come, but like you have to be a creative writing major. And essentially, that letter said, you can come as long as you let us rob you, dude. That's <laughs> like, it. Like, like, give me your money. As long as you amount to give nothing me your with money. This degree. And you're yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, that was the thing when I found out I was going to do a journalism degree. I'm so stupid at math that they I was they were like, you can either they're like, listen, if you're not going to do a journalism degree, you can take math at Pima Community College and then test back into Arizona to get your math credits. I was like, or? They're like, well, you're a journalism degree, so you can do uh, philosophy 110 counts as your math credit. And I was like, let's go. Yeah. What? Sure, fucking, I don't know what the fuck that's about. Socrates okay. is moral, uh, is immortal, therefore all men are mortal. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm I'm fucking, I smoke weed. I'll break this shit down. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, Duncan flown in. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kelly. Yes. Uh, the H- HBO, by the way, back to like how they, they like have a person with me and stuff. Because oh, so you guys know me showing up. I'm like, I, I get high, I come on the train, I'm like, I'll go, go do KFC. Yeah. You know? And then well, that, now, like. Th- that was very funny, like, trying to even just book this. It was like, yeah, usually I'm just like, yo, you coming yeah. in? Yeah. It's like, well, we got we to gotta email the booker. We got to talk to HBO. Yeah, yeah, they're like, like, you're Dan doing. is coming. I you're promise doing you KFC? I'm like, yeah, I'm doing KFC. <laughs> Who do I got to tell? Uh, like, Brian Koppelman, I'm doing his podcast for the special, and he's like, we're just on set on Billions. He's like, Monday? I'm like, yeah, do it Monday. Yeah. And then I'm like, <laughs> tell me about that. Yeah, and now they're like, we need to know. And like, who needs to know? No one gives you shit. I'm on the show. I, I, I know. That's I got it. it. We're done. I'll be yeah. there. I'm fine. <laughs> was there any, uh, like, Billions Billy Showtime, right? Yeah. So was there, is yeah, there any, dude, like. Getting them all. Is there, yeah. I'm like, is that okay? Collect them all. <laughs> is anybody at Showtime like, yo, dude, what the fuck? Uh, to their, honestly, man, as a compliment, Showtime and Netflix have been cool as fuck. Yeah. Both have been like Netflix. We did the stand ups, and everyone that did the stand ups had an option for an hour. So Dion Cole, Nikki, Nate have all done hours. I'm sure Beth and Fortune aren't far far behind. Mm-hmm. I'm a generic white dude. I wouldn't work on Netflix. I disagree with that. But I, I think I people. Your logic, I think people but... would be like fucking Muffy does stand up. Yeah. Yeah. But HBO is the one I wanted. It's the one. It's the one thing where I was like, it's a special. They're doing seven of them. Mm-hmm. You know, like. Gary Goldman, Lil Rel, there's like a bunch of people that I love that did them. And I'm mm. like, yeah, fuck up. yeah, sign me up. Right. And then Showtime was cool with it, and Netflix was cool with it. Netflix was like, all right, maybe come back for the next one. And you're like, all that's right. how you stay in business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. also they were like so backed up that they're like, we, can, we can't start negotiating till 2020. And you're like, can't wait nah, man, I want to do it. Yeah. And, like, and this was back in 2018. Pause, yeah. yeah, so I was like, let's just, and again, to, to, cre- to their credit, they were like, go do it. Oh, I also think that's to your credit, though, because I yeah. don't think, I don't know if everybody maybe gets that treatment. I feel like they're like, you're a funny dude. They know that you're, you're going to want to work with you. They're, yeah. they're not burning the Dan Soda Bridge. Yeah, I've known Robbie for a while, so it was nice. It was it was really cool of him to be like that, you know, and um, yeah, and then HBO was like, we're going to turn it around. The turnaround on this is so fast. That's the craziest shit about this whole thing. It's yeah. like taped it October out first week of December. You taped October shit, oh, October twenty third. Wow. Well, I yeah. guess like you said though, you, you know, you stripped it down and it's pretty it's one mic, one man, it's and like just the a, jokes yeah. flying, there's it, not right? even a stool and water. Right. <laughs> I was like, let's that fucking why, you do know it. I didn't realize that until yeah. right now. You didn't even have a sip of water. Oh, fuck, you should have no not stool. even had a mic. You should have just yelled. Fuck I <laughs> my dad's dead. <laughs> so that's what I want Daddy's to Daddy's dead. When you and I'm mad about it. Yeah. They're like, this is intense. I, I'm fine with screaming babies and daddy's dead. <laughs> Fuck everything. <laughs> this is what HBO is now. <laughs> Just a crazy neighbor. It's like, I don't fucking, I don't like that for billions. is uncomfortable. <laughs> when you do the dead dad stuff. So yeah. uh, shout, out everyone, see shout the, out to everyone in the dead dad club. <laughs> <laughs> you'll see on the special. I mean, you do it in such a way where it's like, you know, it's a thing that if anybody else would bring up, they'd be you know, I am dad passed away and you're just like yeah my dad's fucking dead <laughs> yeah, dude, and my do dad... you see the crowd or people are, are people reacting like holy shit i mean i've had that that joke was very hard to get um to build it to work because right it was just like some crowds are just like Whoa. all right man i'm sorry yeah like, fuck you no, <laughs> no <that's... laughs> fucking no be sorry yeah. Yeah. but uh a, a, a kind of um a precursor or a great like a uh, training 
to get that joke to work was um, when I did Ari. When I did this is not happening. Ari Shafir saw me do the story about me getting robbed, and he was like, "You got to do that on my show. Go work it out like a bit." And so yeah. I went on the road and I worked out the story of getting robbed yeah. because a lot of people are like, "There was a point where I'm hog tied. I got a 45 to yeah. my head, yeah. and you know." I, so I was actually thinking you would do that for this special, but I no, guess no, no, no. I wanted yeah. to, that kind of. Like, I kind of wanted to leave that alone as like a little like because okay. um, it is like the best story. Ever. Yeah, if that was me. I'd be like, "I'm playing the hits. I'm doing. Yeah, the fucking, yeah. I'm doing the Russian joke. I'm doing the <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah, getting yeah, robbed. Yeah, right, I'm playing right. all of them. <laughs> right. Let's bring them all in. Just like, <laughs> do you want the Russian again? Uh, <laughs> Hello, HBO. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things where I was like. I, I, in between doing Netflix in, in a, the HBO hour, it was nice to put out that story of getting robbed and have it punched up to be like, there, there's something where now I can go work on the hour. Mm -hmm. And there you was a the moment name. where I was like, maybe, maybe I, uh, maybe I'll put that in the hour, but it was just, it was good solo piece, but it, it taught me how to like kind of breach subjects where people are uncomfortable mm -hmm. where people are like ah dude this guy's got a gun to his head right and you're like chill i was trying to tell the audience that like you guys yeah, I'm, I'm standing here yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what i say right. in the joke i'm like dude i'm, I'm telling, telling the story yeah. right, right i'm here yeah, We're spoiler good. alert i get out yeah, yeah. there's not because i think people like sometimes their empathy can be wired different and they're like so yeah. dead dads that's why i say that in the special i'm like people with dead dads love dead dad jokes it's right. the people that don't have dead dads that are like oh, ah boy. well yeah. i don't know <laughs> my friend's father and it's like I bet your friend finds this joke funny, right. and I think there'll be people maybe that aren't. That shit, right? I mean, that's yeah. the whole fucking. That's point the whole of point. Of, I think that's the whole point of my special is mm -hmm. just like, dude, if you make fun of it, there's really nothing to be mad about. Yeah. I have I have a friend who passed away, and like yeah. when, when I have a new friend come into like my friend's circle, and like we'll talk about him, like he's still alive, but yeah. like making fun of him, and like who is that? I'm like, oh, it's my buddy. He's dead. Yeah, and he's dead. All start laughing. And <laughs> yeah, like, they just like turn into a fucking ball, and they're like, oh my god, uh, I'm yeah. sorry, like, <laughs> I'm sorry for your loss. They start shaking everyone's hands. I'm sorry like, for your loss. It's fine. It's fine. We're fucking making fun of it. Yeah, one okay. of the most <laughs> fucked up things uh, I've ever done on a date was oh boy. I was go. I was uh, <laughs> I was dating this girl and. We were out to dinner, and she was asking me about my family. And I was like, yeah, you know, I, uh, I had a half-sister. And she's like, all right. And she's like, oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, she uh, she died when I was 16. And she's like, oh, my God. And I go, I'm kidding. She's a trial lawyer in Phoenix. <laughs> and she goes, oh, okay. I go, no, I'm kidding. She's actually dead. And she was like, oh. And it was like the oh, weirdest thing. Well, I dated that girl for a while. So, uh, yeah. I mean, like we eventually talked about it. I was like, I told her, I explained. I'm like, I'm, I just saw the opportunity. And I was like. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Let's you just know, see if I can pull it back and then be like, no, 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 in reality. But she laughed about it, but she was like, oh, my fucking God. They, they say I mean, to stand out, you know, like yeah. Yeah. a line or a joke they've never heard before. Well, yeah, my yeah. sister's dead. No, she's not. Yes, she is. It's what a yeah, what a yo-yo. She was like, oh, oh, my God. <laughs> and if something would stand that, then guess what? Like, yeah. We're going to yeah, be good. That's, that's why we're able to date for a little by fire. Turns out, though, when we both drank, it was fireworks. So probably not a good thing that that lasted. The funniest bit I think of, of the new special is uh, that you give "Please don't leave me head." Oh yeah, I Dude. mean the, the, the self awareness of the whole thing. Like, yeah. I suck I know butt. No one fucked up. I suck, uh, yeah. butt. <laughs> I suck butt, dude. <laughs> Whatever. I don't give a shit. I want to put my mouth on her worst body part. Yeah, yeah. dude. I fucking. I wanted to call the special butt munch. <laughs> I swear to God. Did dude, you say I'll no show or did you just think yeah. better of it? This is what I love about this podcast because this is like I'm doing press today and I have to be like, well, you know, HBO is a very. Uh, but I could I could tell you guys the 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 story the <laughs> conversation deal. I have with my manager about this. Um, so Shane Gillis was with me and it was after the SNL thing, you know, and mm -hmm. he was like, we were in Philly and we're hanging out and, uh, he's in the same management company as me. So my manager knows him and I was telling him, I was like, I want to call my special butt munch. And they're like, yeah, they're, they're saying no. <laughs> so do you have another name? And I was like, no, nah, I want to call a butt munch. <laughs> and they're like, okay, what if we can't call a butt munch? I go, either you're going to call it butt munch or I'm going to call it. Columbine 2 electric shoot a loop. <laughs> and, I go, and the opening is going to be Shane and I walking in Klebold Harris style in trench coats. And my manager was like, you're joking, right? Please tell me you're joking. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm fucking right. Dude, me, Shane, and Brian Six were in the green room laughing so hard at that. Just thinking of my manager being like, no, fuck, what? What is, what is he doing? But my manager's a shit, so he knew it was a joke. But it was like, I do yeah, yeah, I was like, dude, what if we call it Columbine 2, Electric Shoot a Loop? That's then, fucking yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> then I sent a gif of Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold walking in their in their jackets, and I wrote, and that'll be Shane and I in the intro. And he was like, no. 
no, no. But then eventually they were like, no, nah, they can't. They can't do it because of marketing reasons. They can't call it butt munch. Yeah, I get like, it. I mean, I can understand. They can't put it on the MTA line. And you're right, like, all right. Well, right. I want people to watch it. I was going to say, yeah, business yeah. is still business mm-hmm. at the end of the day. That would be. Well, that's the unofficial name. You know butt I mean? munch is. I think that's such a good name because it's like. The whole point of this comedy special is that it's just jokes. Mm-hmm. I'm not telling anyone how you should have opinions. Uh, like, yeah. there's really very little opinions in the special, as far as like my own opinions on things. But I'm not telling people like, think this way. Yeah. I'm kind of like, hey, you should probably think this way if you're not a dick. Yeah. Or this is kind of how I look at shit. But I was like, kind of refreshing, by the way. Thank. But I just wanted to be like, yo, man, here's. Can we call it butt munch? <laughs> just it's that silly. would capture the aura. It would just it. Yeah, like be yeah. silly, and people would be like, "What's it about?" And you're like, "Yeah, I don't know, munching butt." <laughs> and like my dad, fart that's a big yeah, fart, fart, dad. farting, and my dead dad, and like babies Getting crying, high, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it comes edibles. the whole spectrum. Edibles yeah. and they're heavy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, Did you uh, you drop a couple pounds for this? I fucking went to uh, Scotland and walked around for a month. Did you? And like we were walking. I, was, I lived with Sean Patton. Jeffrey Baldinger and Caitlin Cook, and when you do the Fringe Festival, you'll walk like a fucking, like, and three-fourths of a mile just to the venue. So you're doing that, like, you're walking at least four four miles a day. That's, and you just I, don't I even was think watching, about it. I was like, look, Dan's looking pretty chill. Yeah, I'm getting fucking fat. I'm getting back to getting American fat. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got fucking I got a trail mix like a like a fucking but one of the greatest like scams the devil ever pulled is like that's healthy that's not healthy at all it's like, uh, well, like it got you guys I didn't the new offices are above a pot belly yeah, yeah. and that five immediately five guys right there but it's, pot it's belly tough. I'm like oh well, I I'm, I know what I'm getting before I go home <laughs> big old Italian <laughs> yeah dude I love it it was uh it was a it was a fun thing where now that I filmed it and it's like out it's kind of weird because I stayed off the road till January because I didn't want to go wow. on the road and do it, the turnaround was so fast. It was like, I didn't want to go on the road and just do jokes from the special. Yeah. yeah. You know, and people, people are like, this, oh, yeah. I saw I saw this one. Yeah. You know, so it's like when I get when I'm back on the road in January, I'm like, ah, hopefully I'll have some like 30 new and then just fuck around for 15 and give people a show and build start building again. When See, do you go on the road? Because you do bonfire every day, right? Yeah. You you do, do we go on the, trips, we do. It? Yeah. I mean, the road basically for all comics is Thursday through Saturday. Usually okay. do five shows, one on Thursday, two Friday, two Saturday. Got it. And then you hope to get to like theaters like Nate's at now where you're just doing one a night in a different city. Right. But yeah, you do like a city for five shows. And so Bonfire, we built the Bonfire to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we do two on Tuesdays and one of those airs on Thursday, Thursday and yeah. then we can go on the road. And oh, so it awesome. fucking works out. Yeah. But it's Beautiful. a grind, man. It's yeah, but lot, it's right? so fun. I yeah. mean, you guys have a show. Mm-hmm. Like it's this is it's very similar in taste where you're like I would be getting high and going over to Jay's house and Talking watching anyway. these might clips. Well press play. Uh, yeah, press might as well record. pay for my grandmother's electric and and you know mortgage. Yeah, yeah. like doing that. Might as well. It's so it's funny shit. Do you guys do like a lot of prep for that, or is it just more like Life get in flight. there? We literally go. smoke a joint yeah. and look mm-hmm. at the text that we send each other. Right. We're like, yeah. Do you still want to talk about this? And we're like, we we did some shit the other day. It was like. We planned to talk about a clip. That, did you see the clip of Obama a couple weeks ago where he was talking about like culture, cancel culture? Oh, yeah, yeah, So we were going to do that, and then Mitt Romney also did something. So we were like, all right, we're going to do like a little politics. And like halfway, like right away, we're talking about how we sucked. We tried to suck our own dicks. Yeah, kids. dude, that's uh, <laughs> that's exactly our, our our politics episode. <laughs> and when I was standing up being like, when I tried to suck my own dick when I was a kid, I just stood up and bent over. Which yeah, I, no, apparently no, no. is the wrong you way. Know what? On your yeah, back. You, you roll, yeah. you roll yeah. on your shoulders. <laughs> you learning is like the I'm the only person who thought and then, otherwise. And then the I second you get it. hot breath on it, you feel like it's about to happen. <laughs> You're like, oh, it is. Oh, I'm about to suck this dick. Just your head getting a little bit of hot breath from your, <laughs> from your 13 year old mouth. <laughs> like, just 13, having hot breath go 24. over your pee hole. And you're like, <laughs> Yeah, like this is and this starts becoming real. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe I can work at this. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna hit some yoga. I'm oh gonna man, stretching. yeah, like, you're I, like I, I get there. I got go on <laughs> six months of trying. I'm gonna suck this dick. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna blow me. I'm gonna be an O. I'm gonna be an O. I'm gonna be a lowercase O for the rest of my life. <laughs> how how often do do bonfire conversations become bits? Does that ever happen? Like, like, uh, like dude, like the stage? only one that made it in, um, you know, oftentimes Jay and I keep it real, but the Hulk Hogan bit in oh, yeah. the special <laughs> was because Jay and I were watching the trailer for Leaving Neverland, and like 13 seconds in, I'm like, pause it. 
Let me tell you right now who could have fucked me easily. And I was like, Joe Montana, Hulk Hogan, Trish wants to leave me with them. She's like, yeah, you gotta hang out with your heroes. I don't care. And it is because you don't get that from that whole documentary. No one's talking about the point of like, yo, man, I was totally susceptible to that. Yeah, if yeah. my hero would have been like, come on. Listen, this is how we make each other feel good. I'd be like, oh, what's, okay. up? what's up, Hulkster? <laughs> brother, <laughs> let me jerk you off, yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah. And the only, the, my favorite line, one of my favorite lines of the special is the fact that I got to do, let me tell you something, or it was, uh, yeah, um, I think it's like Hulk Hogan, I forget the line, I forget the line of my own joke. That's how much <laughs> read I smoke. But I was like, uh, what, um, Dan Soder's not going to tell on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, dude, that was like the fact that you got to do kind of a Hulkster. That yeah. Was, I, mean, yeah. The, the I was happy pants. to see that, like working the like a, a wrestling thing into it. Is yeah, like I want to know, you know. I'm interested to know what Lil Wayne, Jimmy Buffett, and Hulk Hogan think <laughs> if they see that special. <laughs> Let's get I, the three of them in a room at the oh, same time man, for what a screening. A fucking party. That yeah. would be that would be some content. That's we'll, like we'll a, live that stream sounds them like watching a, your That special. sounds like a Super Bowl party in Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, dude, I went to the Super Bowl in Tampa. I'm fucking there with Jimmy Buffett, <laughs> Little Wayne, and Hulk, Hulk Hogan. Hogan. <laughs> Hammered. Hammered. <laughs> Hulk said the N-word more than Lil I mean, Wayne it's crazy. Did. <laughs> they freestyled. <laughs> Little Wayne told him to chill. Yeah. Next thing I know. Fucking Jimmy Buffett's dropping a leg on Little Wayne. He dropped the big boot on him. <laughs> the uh, speaking of Super Bowl parties, we gonna see each other this year? I hope so. God, Pat, I Pat fucking Niners? hope so. God, I hope so. We have the hardest three weeks coming uh, uh, up. Fuck you guys, by the way. Yeah, we have uh, we have Packers, Ravens, Saints Ooh, next three weeks. That, I mean, that's rough. a. Uh, you know, for a cliche term, that's a measuring stick shit. Yeah. Right? yeah. If we go Find two out of three out of there, we'll see you in February. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope go, so. That would be unbelievable. Jimmy I, G, Tom Brady? That, Ooh, would be, whoo, whoo. that would be the most, like, ready for a game Tom Brady's ever been in his life because he doesn't uh, want to lose that. And the that dirty no talk in Massachusetts trade. that week was like, yeah. fucking call me Jimmy G. Yeah. Yeah. I want to fuck Jimmy G. I Dude, fucking it, hate it, you. It, I fucking hate you. Our sex life is through the fucking roof. I'm fucking nailing my wife. She's yelling out, Jimmy G, I want to fucking kill her, but I love her. Yeah. <laughs> if, if Brady lost that one, man. I would. Oh, man. It, would, it, it, would, like, it wouldn't be. I don't think it would be. I think it, it, no, there's, like, his legacy is beyond reproach now. It is. Yeah, you can't. But it will kill him. Yes, yeah, it will yes, kill that's him. What He'll I want. be back for, you know what? He'll, if that, he won that. I actually he want would that. probably retire. I yeah. think that's but a good he, point. But if he I don't loses, think I, I would root for the Patriots in that Super Bowl. I think because he'll he'll, he'll, he'll leave. Go. He'll leave. He, That'll he, be like he, I if beat he loses, my. He'll be back for ten years, he, dude. He'll, and then it'll get crusty. It'll get Jeff George crusty. Uh, yeah. It'll get like him playing for the Bucks in like twenty twenty five. Well, and you're like Tom Brady's on the fucking Bucks. <laughs> Just they, like a gross thing, you know what I mean? We're like, Ugh. they have that. That's the, the the talk of town in in Boston is that like this is his last year with the Patriots. Really? Well, because his contract's up, and he, you know, he hasn't played poorly this but year. But for who? He hasn't. It, Cam. Like, he has. Bring Cam. Like, to, if they still know. had Jimmy, I would get that. But like, yeah, I don't know who we would. But, but like, he so he needs big money. Yeah. Like, are you gonna pay him big True. money? I I would. I, I I don't think the Patriots' offense has struggled. I don't think there's a game you can look at and you're like that was Brady's fault. He's you don't. Do you don't think he does? They're nine and one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't think he renegotiates to be like? I think he probably. Let me will. take He's a little. Done pay that all cut. like his yeah. whole career anyway. I think I think I saw a repeat uh, a report the other day that his he's left like. 160 million dollars on the table, or yeah, something like that. That's, that's not, that should not be fair, by the way. Yeah. The NFL needs to stop that. You yeah, can't then, do that. Then there's this alignment who's going to shoot himself in the chest, and he made four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> he was a good pulling guard for three years, and then the next thing you know, he's murdered his family, and he's just on the top level of a parking garage. <laughs> like, Chris save my day. fucking brain! <laughs> Poof. And he's like, "How much did he make?" And you go. $43,000 <laughs> all three years combined. You're like, what are you fucking? You guys are paying them like old 70s players? And then Brady's like, yeah, I walked away from a $900 million contract. My wife's rich. It's I'm all good. good. Giselle makes that in the uh, summer. Yeah. And you're like, oh, fuck. fuck. Off. Yeah, dude, it's fuck pretty off, fucking crazy man. to think of the pay, dis pay gap. It, I, well, like the, I mean, the linemen get paid. Obviously, I think the guards are low. But like the tackles and shit now, they get paid. I mean, tackles get money. Centers but, and guards. If you're an interior lineman, yeah. get ready to fucking move Nissans in whatever city yeah, you play absolutely, college football. Absolutely, dude. <laughs> you're gonna be fucking. Percent. Get ready to do Local a handshake hero. on the lock, going Buckeyes. Am I right? <laughs> hey, what's going on? Bear down. What's up, brother? Can I get you in this Maxima? 
Thing's only got 5,000 miles on it. It was a retread. Well, let's, let's see what you got going on. Let me go. Let's go in the office and talk about this. The off season, you're like laying roofs and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, That's I what it was back in the 70s game. and 80s. Yeah, this is a side Dude, hustle, NFL cool. player. Yeah. I always love It's always like that story where they're like, this guy was delivering sodas and now he's a kick returner. And he's like, so he'll be back to delivering sodas so next it, year. For, yeah, in, in this two weeks. Season. He's going to make a. Yeah, uh, yeah it's so. Ex- get, like, players are so expendable in the NFL when they're not. And then all of a sudden it's like. But even big, big contract guys you were, that you thought you were going to think of forever disappeared in like mm-hmm. three years. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, that guy signed well, up. Well, once the money is not. You know, as soon as you fall off a cliff, you're cut, you're gone. Le'Veon Bell, it. where is he about to go? <laughs> Where the hell is he gonna go? He's 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 on Twitter yelling about getting tested it. for HGH. I love it though. He's he, like, keep testing me, keep testing me. Well, no, he said, oh, yeah, he no, said, he said he's done no now. more. He's he like, there's he a bunch five, of guys. He's got five tests already this week. This, Do you think they're just season. doing that to fuck with him? I he must be like a problem because yeah, like well, it's also like, bro, if you're doing HGH, it's not working because you're having a shit season. So I don't know. Do more or some fucking. He should start come, doing. He it. should come back like Super Shredder and Secret of the Ooze. <laughs> just <laughs> fucking jacked. <laughs> And they're like, He's and Le'Veon Bell clearly on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just let it. I'm very excited uh, about, we were talking about money, but pay, paying college athletes, NCAA it's college coming. football. It's coming. Yo, did you see what just happened with the NCAA basketball? No. So James Wiseman plays from Memphis, and um, his, he's, he's the potential or probable number one pick in the NBA draft. And I guess – the Memphis Boosters or something like that helped his family move to Memphis so they could watch sure. him play and have yeah, yeah. you know support system and things like that. We got busted, so he was indefinitely suspended. It's trash. Last night it was decided that it will be reduced to a 12 game suspension if he pays an eleven thousand five hundred dollar fine to a charity of his choice. to a charity of his choice. So it's like they don't even give a fuck where the money goes. Yeah. Yeah. They're just like you can't have it. You go, it's give like, me the money. Like, goes, like what you fuck is he got eleven thousand five without yeah. a job? Yeah. Who yeah. the fuck's he gonna get? Like, he's gonna get that he's gonna have to take it, yeah. again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, he just sells drugs. <laughs> <laughs> they go, you know what we did? We ended up busting up this opiate ring. <laughs> this guy's just trying to pay his NCAA fines. <laughs> yeah, so they uh, the NCAA is one of the most corrupt organizations. It's like them and FIFA, man. For real, it really is. It's like those two, and then like Eastern. Europe politics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's talk, like the range of it. I talk about this. this probably American uh, politics now too, but yeah, yeah. Like a, a documentary I saw on Netflix called Schooled a while back, and it's all about the like college athletics and how it became a uh, nine billion dollar year when that when it was made. I don't know what it is now. Yeah. nine billion dollar year industry and all the sneakers, all, all the money it makes, and the head of the NCAA quit in the eighties, eighty four, eighty six, something like that, and in his like retirement or quitting speech. He said, "What we are doing right now is bordering on becoming like illegal, yeah, and or like slavery, whatever like it is." Yeah. Years and ago. that was forty years. Yeah, ago. Yeah, it was the eighties. That was the eighties when they were running ever... the HBO special. <laughs> yeah, the when they run the same <laughs> intro. <laughs> but there was also like it was still thought of as a good way to get an education. Yeah, yeah, that's how yeah. dumb those people were. They're like, "You're gonna get an education," and now they're like, "Get that money, baby." Mm-hmm. You, got you see a the family fucking the eight. education they get? Did you see your fucking uh, Trevor Lawrence, the Clemson quarterback? Today, the picture of him in class. No. no, he's giving a presentation. The presentation he's giving is how I get my hair to look like this. Dude. <laughs> he's is, got a PowerPoint. In I class. feel like everyone should go to a major school <laughs> just to watch how they treat the athletes. Yeah. It's insane. It is awesome. Arizona, the basketball players. I had a couple. They would just come in and sleep, and you're like, Yeah, yeah dude, you dropped 36 what, on you, Cal. Were you there yeah. for anybody? Like, oh uh, man, we had a fucking stack. We were pipe. top five. Yeah, we had uh, my class was. Channing Fry, Celine yeah. Stoudemire, Isaiah Fox. Um, we had Will Bynum and Dennis Lattimore. Like, that was like our freshman class. But then we came into Luke Walton, Rick Anderson, Jason Jeez. Gardner. We were a top five the, the, team. The Gardner team, I lost a boatload of money on them choking. Like the, it was like the Elite Eight or something like that. We choked in the Elite Eight in 05 yeah. my senior year to Illinois. That's Steve what Steve Brown and Deron yeah, Williams that fucking was a bad one. crushed That us. was a bad one. Dude, that's my favorite. One of my favorite stories of college ever was uh, my friends had... It was Tucson, so you just like party outside. My friends put an old school big screen TV outside for the Oklahoma State. One of those ones that's like two thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had like six guys move it. Yeah, and we put it in the back, and it was Oklahoma State, Arizona, Elite Eight, and everyone was like, "If we win this, we don't have a class on that day," because someone else had been around since we went to the Final Four in '01 when we lost to Duke, and they were like, "I'm telling you." 
if they go to the Final Four, they're going to call classes on that day so everyone can watch the Final Four. And everyone was like, fucking hyped. And it was a party. It was great. We were up like 15 ching. Fry hit a three with like 90 seconds left. And everyone's like, fucking Final Four. We're going to the Final Four. And then you just saw D Brown be like, fuck Arizona. And he is, I knew we were in trouble because Bill, it kept going to Bill Murray. And I love Bill Murray. Everyone who doesn't love Bill Murray, yeah. and he he had an Illinois shirt on, and he, I was like, "Stop oh, it! No, stop man, it, Bill Murray! Stop it, Bill Murray!" <laughs> and then they just started coming back, and then uh, they tied it, and we went to overtime, and then they blew us out in overtime. But right as we lose in overtime, their neighbor that no one really liked. He was just kind of like this kid from San Diego, and he had like had a bunch of blow, so they'd hang out with him a lot. <laughs> I never liked the guy. He fucking comes in through the backyard. Everyone's in the backyard watching this old school TV, and we lose. And everyone's silent, and you just hear this kid go, Final Four! Oh. And he pops a bottle of champagne because he ran to go get it. Thought it was over. Thought it was over. Oh, my God. Dude, <laughs> there was, I just remember like the drip off my eyebrows just staring at this kid being like, what the fuck? And he was like, oh, man. <laughs> Dude. It was him losing. So You're like, you similar to that. shit. This was a couple years ago. We hired a new kid, Marty Mush, uh, who has a parrot. Okay. He has a pet. And it was his rally bird for a while. He's a de- de- uh, degenerate gambler. So yeah. he, he was doing live streams with his parrot. And this is a couple years ago. The Yankees, uh, was it the play-in game? Yeah. By the time he, so he's commuting in yeah, from Long 80s, Island. I think, right? And I, they, they, they probably won that though. But when he showed up with a parrot, the elevator doors opened in the old place, and the Yankees were down like ten nothing or some yeah, shit like that. The, the, and he was like, "I'm here. I got the bird." And every Yankee fan was like, "Fuck you. We're fuck down to bird." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Under- he goes, he's like, what? Under- <laughs> he's holding a br- a broomstick with a bird on the side, and he was just like. What? what? <laughs> Dude, can you imagine being next to him on the LIRR? Yeah. You're just going in, you go, yeah, no, 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 my sister lives in Ronkonkoma. That's exactly where he lives. That's so That's funny. Exactly. Like, I don't know, my, my sister's kid's sick. I had to go out and see him. I'm coming back. It's like, huh? Huh? Jeter's gone. Jeter's gone. And you're like, shut up. Shut up. That's it's like, unbelievable. Huh? Jeter. You're like, hey, can you shut the fuck up, dude? <laughs> hey, listen, I just saw my nephew. He's not doing well. Huh? Joe Girardi. You're like, shut the fuck up. Dude, I'd go nuts. I'd go nuts if I was on public transportation with a parrot. parrot. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's good with Billions? Season five, dude. We're making it. Is that, um? I mean, that's, how many, how many are you going to go? I don't know, man. I don't know. They we'll always, probably they, rap, like, soon they just, fucking, the like, way they're able to twist shit up, and yeah. I don't know, man, but season five is going to be interesting. We're, we're two episodes in right now, and it's fucking good. Good. Mm-hmm. There's a good new. You had a nice bad little run guy. on that, huh? Did you expect to be like a consistent, like season after season character when you first did it? No, no, yeah, no. no. When I first, when I first, season one uh, at the beginning of Billions, they signed me for like five episodes, and then I was screen testing for SNL. So they were like, "If you get SNL, we'll write you off the show, mm-hmm. or maybe you won't even be on the show." But then I didn't get SNL, and they're like, "All right, we're gonna have you on like." Six episodes. What a fucking miss by SNL. Yeah, that's all right. Well, I think that's better for you, but it would have been great. Way for better for my life. Yeah, the, yeah. Way I would be hammered right now. If I worked for SNL. I'd be, I'd You'd be fired. Be yeah. I'd be fired. I'd be somewhere just drunk, being yeah. like, "Hey, fucking get my vision." <laughs> um, no, I was good. It's good to take L sometimes, and that was a good L to take. But uh, when we started season one, one of the other guys at Axe Cap just started working a bunch. And mm-hmm. and when that's the case, they're like, we had this we got more rip. lines to be like, said, right? Yeah, give it to Mafi. Wow, and I was like, yes, yeah. That's and funny. then uh, the addition of Taylor in season two just kind of yeah. like can't, they came in as my intern, and then they did, you know they did a good job of moving that storyline along where it stayed parallel where where I'm uh, I'm Taylor's you know number one officer. I remember when you uh, were kind enough to to stop by like our first live show, and then you kind of just bounced afterwards, and everyone yeah. in the uh, you know, we had like a little meet and greet after, yeah, yeah. and people were like it's so fucking crazy that Soda just like puts on his backpack and then just yeah. like, goes home. Like, yeah, yeah, he's on fucking billions. He's working on his HBO. You're yeah. still living like, with a roommate. Yeah, we yeah. got it. <laughs> Shout you out. gotta get your own place. Shout out Mike Vecchione. <laughs> Here's At the this thing: point, is, I like, people think it's like good for materials. So you might as well just have yeah. forever. No, but, man. I um, you know, there's been people that have shit on it, and and uh, it's also like you don't fucking know my life. I'm taking care of my grandma and my mom, and, right. and I'm also like. I'm I'm not an idiot. 
this shit that I'm doing is temporary. Mm. Yeah. It's all temporary until it's done, and then it's just done, and yeah. then you got to move on. So it's like when people are like, oh, you got a roommate. It's like I live with one of the best joke writers in comedy. <laughs> Mike Vecchione is the guy that Dave Attell goes to. It's the guy that oh, other people well. go to where they're like, to check jokes. Like that's how he's fucking brilliant. Yeah. He's brilliant, and he's not only one of my best friends, but one of the best comics in New York. So living with him, I wake up and I'm I'm running. I'm like, hey, anyone do a bit about this? You know, it's mm-hmm. like living at a gym. Yeah, and yeah, constantly yeah, yeah. working out, and you're like, why would I move out of a gym? For what? Just so I can have a nice place? It's like, I don't really need a nice place. Yeah, I'm the same way. I have two roommates. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, I, I go like, home, I'm good. I'm fine. Yeah. And you know what? We're both on the road enough that a lot of the times I've had the apartment for myself for the last 10 days. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and he's going to come home, and we got stuff to talk about. Yeah. Boys, you know, the gummy, and you're good to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give him a fucking fat edible and watch him <laughs> fucking wig out. But yeah, it's like one of those things where. Um, Living with a roommate isn't. We live in New York City. It's yeah. we don't. It's a little in, more common. If I was in fucking Des Moines mm-hmm. and I lived with a roommate, you'd be like, "How much drugs are you on?" <laughs> well, that's, I mean, I, every every blog I ever wrote about two roommates in Florida, someone gets murdered with an axe. Yeah, like every for time. real. And for me, it's like Mike. I, I love the dude, and there's always like there's a person to vent to where I can kind of gauge how I'm coming off in situations. Yeah, because he from, gets the whole biz in the industry. But he the, knows people. He knows yeah. the history. So if I got a problem with someone and I come in and I'm like, "What the fuck?" He can also he can go with me and be like. Nah, man, you're justified for that. Or you can go go and be like, well, I don't know, maybe you'd be a little crazy about that. And I I trust him, so I'm like, yeah, all right. I also think that it's like it's it's almost weirder, like where the there there is like almost a, a cap age where you they'll probably kill you over something to eat in their refrigerator. Food. The yeah. But it's also like I I find it much easier to have a roommate now than I did at 23 yeah. because like they were partying and shit like that. And, like there's no annoyance. Respect your place. It's yeah. just like yeah, hang out in your room, do your thing. And, and I'll say, you know thing. what I mean? We're like. Hey, my yeah. And they're like, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> you know, they're like, fucking wake him up. Let's party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, dude, I lived with Handsome Pete. Shout out to Pete. Um, <laughs> Handsome what Pete. He would bring home some, I mean, just brought home a lot of ladies. And with a name t- like Handsome Pete. Dude, the <laughs> guy, one time he, I came home and he was just, he was like jacked. And he was just in European cut underwear laying on the couch like this, <laughs> watching TV. And he walks in and he goes, hey. And I was just like with this girl and I go, hey. Throw on a shirt, dude. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing here? I'm gonna lose. I'm. I'm gonna immediately. I'm not surprised. She was like, "I'll chill on the couch." I'm like, yeah, I'll go to bed. Um, but one time he brought these girls home, and my girlfriend and I were sleeping in my windowless room on my mattress on the floor, and we were. And it was like it was like 4:50, and they were like loud, like talking or whatever. And that's when you're like, I'm gonna fucking yeah. kill someone mm-hmm. and i opened the door and this drunk girl's like it's a pizza party <laughs> and you're like shut your fucking mouth i, that, I was like i think i just pizza. turned 30 so i was like shut up little girl <laughs> shut your mouth pizza parties are for good girls <laughs> it's like, not for bad girls at 4 50 in the morning but that was when we kicked him out because we were like yo dude mike and i were like we could live together because mike's older than me and we we're like we need a, a quieter place and pete was still boozing and partying mm-hmm. god bless him Right, just not on that page. And then we looked for a place in Queens that was like at the same price as our apartment uh, that we were paying for three people, but with two bedrooms, and everything we found was smaller than what we had. So we're like, we called our landlord, like, yeah, I was just going to stay the two of us. And he's like, all right, yeah, go for it. Lived in the same place for like 13 years. Wow, that's actually yeah. crazy. And I like my neighborhood, and I just yeah. like where everything is. So when people shit on it, I'm like, eh, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, like, I'm the same way. Like, I'll, I'll probably will eventually, but like, I'm like, I'm, I like my to most buy important a place. thing is personal space. And like, if, yeah. if they let me have it, fuck do I give a Good shit if go. my rent's cheaper. Also, man, if I can live with someone that I like, that I respect, that's, that's great at the job we do, and I can get better by living with them and fucking hang out with them all the time and have a person, fucking yeah, yeah. and stack cash. Just all right, we it. get it. It's fine. You're yeah. okay. All right? You like Fuck your roommate. You. All right? I like him. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck all of you. And Let's do one answer to the internet question here before we go. Oh, dude, it's uh, crazy you guys have a fucking game. Yeah. Now. We'll do one here, and then we'll do a full. You got to run it back and do a full session here. All right. You pick. All right. All right. Have one. Let's fucking get into it. Dude, these are so weird because these just be on cue cards. Yeah. I know, man. Yeah. You go to a girlfriend's house and meet her father for the first time. He hands you an aux cord. What song are you playing first? Me and my bitch, Notorious <laughs> B.I.G. The opening line is, when I first saw you, my thoughts was a trip. You look so good, I'd suck on your daddy's dick. No way. And once yeah. again, yeah. once again, we retire a question because of Dan Soder. Me and my bitch, Notorious Holy B.I.G. Shit. You Damn. are by far the best at this game ever. 
That I just, was unbelievable. I just know how to set the tone. <laughs> Holy that's a t- shit. <laughs> that's a set the tone hit right off the top. You didn't even have to think for a nah, second about a, what song, so what song mentions sucking your like dad's, dad's dick. dick. Yeah, I just ear hole the dad and be like, that's what your baby girl's into now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be it. That'd just I mean, be I'm like, not even participating. That's <laughs> it. Done, done, done. All right, if you want to hear more of uh, Answer the Internet with Dan Soder, go find him on the YouTube page Yeah, right we'll now. do a full sesh. Come on.